Space. I'm Tim here with Lance here on Friday the 13th, Lance, in October, one of the spookiest days of the year, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, sir. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. The The voice is uh, coming back slowly. Uh, if we had to do this on Monday, I probably wouldn't have done it, wouldn't have been able to do it. So uh, sorry that it still sounds uh, abnormal, but it's on its way back. Better than it was. Well, it is no more abnormal than what I'm used to, which is, uh, it's as if a bottle of, of extra virgin olive oil started singing. <laughs> yes, and it's no more abnormal than our topic tonight, which uh, it, it is Friday the 13th, it is October, we're getting close to Halloween, we're going to talk about spooky stuff tonight, kind of going to take a look at some ghost stories, some recent trending uh, ghost sightings, if you want to call them. Um, we'll explain in a little bit. And then and then I want to tell a personal story. And then Lance, I think you have one too. That's kind of a personal story, but it's, it's, more, it's more about one of the ghost story. It's relatable to one of the, um, one of the items that we're going to show tonight. Just kind of, just kind of fitting, I guess. And it made me realize something about myself. I love doing these episodes. These are the vault episodes that we do. You know, every other month or something, we'll do something like this. It mostly comes along when, when some shit starts to get a little too heavy on the other podcasts. And we feel like we need to just take a step back and just talk and talk about fun things. And like you said, it's October. It's, it's autumn in New England. It's Friday the 13th. We have Halloween coming up. And I know that that's one of your favorite holidays. It's one of my favorite holidays. And to let it go by without just, I don't know, kicking back and, and talking about Halloween stuff. Like, we should do that. And if anyone's been paying attention, things do things are getting pretty heavy. Yeah. And, and this you can call this our Halloween show. So, so fire this one up next to the fireplace. Um, or, or if you're camping, maybe listen to it. Uh, because we're, we're going to get a little spooky tonight. Um, but yeah, w y in case you uh, haven't been following the Oxygen Show on Maura Murray, you should check that out. The Disappearance of Maura Murray, it's on the Oxygen Network. Lance and I are on the show, uh, and we also do the Missing Maura Murray podcast. But we figure usually if you're listening to this, you already knew that. But it's probably true that there are some people that uh, didn't know that. So uh, welcome to uh, to this crazy world and uh, we're trying to find uh, find out what happened to Maura Murray. Oh, this is something I just want to let people know. Like Tim and I had a conversation about this earlier on today, and we said, "What do you want to talk about?" And we kind of threw some stuff out there, but a lot of this is going to be um, real time. I don't know really what Tim's about to talk about, so you're going to hear some pretty genuine reactions. The only two things that we did talk about talking about is uh, th there's a a photograph that. That came about on October 6th. There's an article in the Huffington Post called uh, Ghosts Caught on Camera at Famed Stanley Hotel in Colorado. Now, Lance, why does the Stanley Hotel in Colorado sound familiar? Well, the Stanley Hotel was the hotel Stephen King used for his inspiration uh, for the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. And this is a place that I've always wanted to go to. I've always, always wanted to go to the Stanley Hotel. I've always wanted to set up some cameras or something. Um, and this is the part that, uh, well, I'll get to that later, the, uh, the part that I realized about myself when I was looking at this picture and looking at the history of the Stanley Hotel and the history of all of the sightings that have happened. There's a staircase the, at the uh, Stanley Hotel. It's like the main staircase. And this new picture that has, that has surfaced I wouldn't say that I'm like the skeptic and, and I wouldn't say that Tim is the believer in this relationship. I think we're both pretty open-minded to all scenarios uh, and we will try to pick apart certain things. But this is a, if someone doctored this, they did a fantastic job. Uh, what you're looking at here is a picture of a group of, um, a group of tourists, I assume, and they're all gathered in on the landing um, the, after the first uh flight of stairs comes to a landing and it's a picture taken from above and i mean if if someone said it it looks like a young girl it looks like a little girl who has just come to the top of the steps um 
and maybe they caught her in motion. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't look too different from some of the other people who are moving, uh, who are definitely solid people. Uh, this apparition or whatever you want to call it in the photograph is definitely, you know, seemingly not a real person. You can kind of see through, and I'm going to say her because it does look like it is a uh, young girl with uh, long blonde hair and sort of like a nightgown on or something like that. Looks like she's wearing a white, um, I don't know, pajamas or something, right? Am I reading this one wrong? No, it looks, yeah, good job describing it. It looks like she's, um, looks like she's just like gotten out of bed and she's got her, her nightgown on, like pajamas or, or, or something like that. Uh, blonde hair. There's a couple of interesting, uh, elements to this. Uh, the way the light is coming down on her head is really interesting to me. I don't know if anyone's brought that up, but it, it's a light flare from the light that's on the wall and it's coming down on her head in these two, like, pretty specific beams. Um, now, if you look to the left of her on the stairs, you'll see what, what looks like something, this kind of peach-colored blob right there going up the stairs. And at first glance, again, it looks like this could be a person just caught in motion. But look look down. Look down in between the railings, and you don't see the continuation of the body there. As a matter of fact, you do see the stairs. Hmm. Um, wow. So I didn't yeah. even notice so, that one, actually. Uh, I just thought it was part of the woman who, and it looks like there's a second woman walking down the stairs. But, yeah, what you're describing actually is uh, my initial instinct, because I, I hadn't seen that before, is a woman in a red dress, looks like almost polka dotted, but it looks like she's walking up the stairs sort of a fancy dress looks like her hair is up in a bun even but you can't really make out all of her um and you can tell she's not real uh per physical person there in the picture are we talking this is now an interesting conversation are we talking about the same thing because i'm talking about this 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 blob like figure so you see the woman in like the beige coming down the stairs coming down the stairs yeah with the glasses yeah yeah and then are you talking about this other woman that's in, that's like like right at the bottom of her hand? Uh, no, actually. I'm talking about uh, the, the, that looks like a woman with glasses or possibly like a duplicate of that woman. But, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's almost like a double exposure. But I'm talking about the little apparition right in front of her. Okay, yeah, we are talking about the same thing. It's I don't red. see some. Oh, Oh, you got to see this. We'll link to the photo. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this, because you'll need to to check this out. Uh, so check out the link in the show notes on this one. Sorry, I, I'm getting excited now. <laughs> I'm looking at that. Uh, I'm I. You know, it's like one of those optical illusion things where you saw it. So like you're looking at it in one way, and then you have to like almost readjust your eyes or refocus your eyes. That. That black smudge that's right at the corner there, that black smudge, mm -hmm. if, if you look at the woman in between the two, yep, and then you kind of go diagonally up, go diagonally up, that black, that's her head that you're yeah. talking about, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, if you look straight in front of her, I thought that was the head. Oh, okay. That's the dress part. Yeah, I think her red, her red totally. I think it's a red dress, yeah. Yeah, it could be a red dress, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I saw it as like a like a pale person. Hmm. And that was the head part. Yeah, it does seem so, like an, an interesting uh an interesting blot like it doesn't seem like it's real though, because right in front of right in between the real woman and this ghostly apparition that we're describing is what looks like a duplicate of the woman who's walking down the stairs because it's looks like the same exact glasses. Does it look like the other person's holding a phone? Yeah, there's definitely something there. It does look like a phone. <laughs> it's a really messed up picture. Yeah, take a look at this. Um, so any anyway, the the article kind of goes on to, you know, question what what it is we're looking at here. Um, and there's a, uh, a former FBI agent and host of a show called Fact or Faked said in a careful analysis that the photo turns up no obvious signs of trickery. 
And, uh, and I agree. And I have a pretty good eye for effects and things like that, doing some effects and video work and things like that. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's anything fake about this photo. It doesn't mean it is real, but. Right. I mean, you're looking for things like shadows. You're looking for, um, yeah, you're looking for, for like shadows being off or, I mean, someone looking at it, maybe a reflection caught there that the, the girl is, the girl's astounding. The little girl on the stairs. No one remembers there to be a little girl in the, in the group. Um, and this is a ghost tour group, by the way. Um, probably, probably important to mention that, uh, for, for one reason or another, but, um, I don't know. It, I mean, I guess that that may get into a deeper question. Like, so if you're on a ghost or if you're a ghost and there's a ghost tour, are you more likely to show up because there's a ghost tour? Are you just hanging around? It doesn't matter. You don't give a shit who's hanging around. You're, or you're just always there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you see the window in the back there and it looks like a table. Yep. I freaked myself out when I was looking at this picture earlier and I was trying to, you know, study it for um, whether it was fake or not. And I thought that that was reflecting something falsely. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's another room. Yeah, yeah it's outside right? the window. It yeah. looks like a balcony. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I a, wonder. And a, and a long table there. So I was looking for reflections in there, you know, maybe something that could. Well, you hit on woman... it. You hit on it with the reflection with these two beams that kind of shine down right where this little girl is walking down the stairs. So I think that. Some photographers might look at that and just shrug and be like, "Yeah, it's probably some kind of flare," because they're already you can already tell there's flare, it's glare, whatever you want to call it. Um, sure, you know, but it it looks it, it doesn't look like that. It does, you know. I I would challenge someone who said that. Two things, two more things about this. I wonder where this was taken. So if you go up the stairs that are to the left. Does it go around to a balcony and you can look down like that? I don't know. We should so, go to the Stanley Hotel. I know. If anybody out there has any sort of connection to the Stanley Hotel, uh, shoot us a shoot us an email and um, let's see if we can coordinate a trip out there. Yeah. Maybe if maybe if the general manager of the Stanley Hotel is listening, tell him or her that we'd like to do a uh, a night a pod a live podcast from the Stanley Hotel. Oh man, they probably get inundated with requests like that. But, but not not I, from cool people like us. <laughs> I, w I would like to hear from anyone if you're affiliated with the Stanley Hotel or if you've been there and especially on one of these ghost tours. I'd love to hear what your feelings were on it. So my other point about this yep. is if someone is going to fake this mm -hmm. picture, I'm, I'm looking here. I, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, at six mirrors right here. Not counting that window that can act as a reflective surface. They picked a pretty inconvenient spot to fake it. You know, if if that was actually a little girl and they took a picture and then they developed it, <laughs> developed it, <laughs> if they took the picture and then they looked at their phone and was like, oh, it looks like she's a ghost. I mean, you have to look at all of those reflections and nothing shows evidence of her being there in the reflection. Yeah. It's just tough to fake a picture with so many opportunities for reflections. What about this other story that uh, I saw today on the Today Show on the, on uh, this morning? Actually, we're recording this on uh, Wednesday. And uh, so check it out. We'll link to it in the show notes. But it's out of Ireland, Cork City, a school. Uh, so do you have this ready, uh, queued up, Lance? It's from October 1st. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here, let's press play at the same time. So what we're looking at here is a school hallway. Just we'll describe the shot here. There's uh, bathroom doors on the left, um, and there's a long oh. hallway straight down the center. And what you just saw... Whoa. Oh, that was loud. Yeah, just saw a door slam at the end of the hallway, and it was real loud. Door opened and slammed. Yep. Yeah. And there's seemingly no one here, and this is uh, late at night, you would imagine. Oh. 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 And there's some lockers. Okay. There's uh, yeah, lockers seven that lockers are shaking. that are uh, kind of leaning against the wall, and one of them is shaking violently. It doesn't fall, but there's no one behind there. But there is a window back there. There is a window back there. I suppose you could have a, a hand 
potentially yeah, pulling rock it back it. and forth. Yep. Yep. Potentially. Okay. Beep, beep, Still watching. Beep. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's interesting. And then a, a, one of the locker doors flies open and a, and a few pages burst books, out. maybe? Like textbooks uh, come out? It looks like a notebook, like a and, notebook and some loose pages. Yeah. Um, and there's also the this uh, caution, like water on the ground, wet floor. Yeah, wet uh, floor. Thing, which looks primed for... Uh, <laughs> and right oh, on for cue, that. right on cue, it gets knocked over by seemingly nothing. No, I didn't get knocked over. That got twisted. That broke. Yeah, that got twisted and thrown down violently. This uh, this apparition is angry, Lance. Okay, so if okay, and, where and are it's we over at now? now. We're it's at over. the end. Okay, one forty-one. It, it's a it's a minute and forty-one seconds, and it's really like a perfect video too, because it never never any point during it are you bored. Um, it just kind of keeps banging through th- the scares. These are these are brilliant. I don't even care if this is fake, <laughs> because it it gives you time. If if someone faked this, uh, then they have, who? Yeah, I'm watching it again. They have the. Uh, I gotta pause it. They have the, they have the timing of, like a Hollywood director. Yeah. So that the door in the back at right around the 14 second mark 13 14 second mark the door in the back down this dark hall so at 14 seconds you know you're watching a a a video about a ghost right yeah so you've had 14 seconds to be like what the fuck's about to happen (laughs) and they do this subtle thing this is if it's fake Mm -hmm. they do this subtle thing where this door flies open and at first you don't even realize it's a door because i just paused it yeah it doesn't make a sound right it just comes open and then the sound it makes is super jarring yeah right yeah, it's just like a, a, horror, a sound effect from a from a horror movie. In a in an empty hall, schools are creepy when they're empty mm-hmm. and it's dark. Yeah, schools are creepy. Schools are creepier than graveyards if <laughs> if they're abandoned. I don't know about that. Have you you walk through? I I have often walked through dark schools. <laughs> when, when, during your uh, janitorial keep, years? Let, yeah, let's keep going on the video though. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like how they progress the ghost. Right through the through the hall. The like you mentioned, a Hollywood director. So the the caution wet floor sign is like really strategically placed in this camera shot, right. um, where that so much that you're like, well, you know, if if you know if you were told before you watched this video that a bunch of things are going to happen in this video, or like this is about a ghost, you're like, oh well, obviously that is going to get hit. You know, it's almost like you could predict it. And then the locker shakes. I will say the window behind the lock, the shaking locker, looks like it's closed. You know, uh, I, I don't even know that it goes outdoors. I guess, I guess it would have to, huh? It's, it's, but it's definitely nighttime. Yeah, yeah. It does look closed. I will say. But I like how they've, uh, I like how they've progressed the ghost moving into into the room so the ghost like opens the door and slams it walks up starts shaking the locker and he walks yeah he walks all the way down the hallway like some 20 30 feet yeah you could i mean if he was a a person or a figure you could picture him storming down the hallway really pissed about something yeah so this would be amazing if the school had actually encouraged the kids to do this the students to do this it seems like and i would love it if if uh, the school that I went to would do something like this, because it's 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 elaborate, you have to like, I mean, are they tied off with fish line, like monofilament line? It just be it, it's a cool uh, cool thing to get all those students involved in. It actually is um, staged, Lance. I'm looking at it now, uh, reportedly having a little spooky fun because they're having a Halloween event on October 29th. So it does seem like it is a staged thing. Um, is it that easy to stage a video like this? Because it seems like in a lot of places on the internet, the, you know, this is appearing on, on lists of uh, evidence of uh, paranormal activity. Wouldn't that be crazy, right? These guys put together something simple, and all of a sudden it becomes viral. You said that you saw it on the Today Show, and they were actually promoting it as like, is this I saw it in passing. I don't want to confirm that, how they were talking about it. I saw it in passing. 
and looked oh, it up. You weren't you, you, <laughs> I you don't, weren't drinking your morning morning mm, coffee with the Today Show. No, I was try, uh, trying to get get uh, Violet out of the house and get to work. Okay. <laughs> Either way, it was on the Today Show. It was. So they they have created this uh, this elaborate. And it is elaborate. They've created this elaborate prank and in Ireland in a school, and it's made it all the way to the Today Show and featured as as something that could possibly be evidence of paranormal activity. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think they're probably having a good laugh about it. I don't think there's any ulterior motive uh, behind it. Can we figure it out, though, real quick? Like how? Yeah, because um, I want to know how easy this is to do. Like this is fool. This fooled me right off the bat, and is fooling other people. I'm sure. So, how easy is it to make these? And should we just assume all these type of videos about ghosts are fake because they're easy to fake? The yep. door in the back. That's easy. Pretty easy. Easy because you can't see anything down there anyway. It could be a kid hanging back there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're well coordinated with the locker shaking second, but so for this one to, I guess there's a little bit of space between the locker that shakes and the other set of lockers. So I suppose there could be someone hiding from the camera there and shaking it. What do you think? I really think it's the window. You think it's the window, but if it's the window, like there almost needs to be a handle on the back of the locker uh, where you like shake it like that, because if you just, you know, pushed it, it wouldn't, you know, you could you potentially, can't pull back. Yeah, you could potentially push it over and it you can see that it's pulled back um, with force. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a locker expert by any means. <laughs> but no one is actually. No, un- unless you actually do build lockers. But a lot of the times uh, gym lockers like this, you'll have the holes where you put the screws in, where the back comes on to the front. Yeah. Or, I mean, where the back uh, attaches to the shelves. Yeah. And so maybe there was something in there. Maybe you could, I'm you wrong. Could put a... Maybe I'm wrong. I just looked at it again, and maybe they're just using gravity. But if it's a person, they're, you know, they, they have pretty good control over how far they're pushing the locker. Maybe there is no handle. I just looked at it a little closer with that, like through that lens. And maybe they push it. Yeah. yeah. I see exactly kind, what you're talking about. It kind about. of stops at the top. So maybe it isn't pulled back with such force, but my brain told me that it did the first time. So, Isn't that crazy? Okay, so I think we got two of them. And then, <laughs> and then uh, the locker flies open and some papers fly out. And a notebook. This one's impressive. This one's very impressive. Uh, it's got to be some kind of fish line, right? From beyond the camera angle. S- yeah, some some string some monofilament line, or yeah, and it's probably attached to the notebook, if I were to guess. And there were the two loose pages on top of the notebook. And then when the person beyond the camera angle pulls. It pulls through the door of the locker because the locker was actually open anyway. It wasn't shut all the way. That's That would be how I would uh, have seen this done. What do you think? Good theory? That's not a bad theory at all. Not a bad theory at all. And you probably wouldn't see the string. Unless there was some way where you could get some sort of some sort of stick or pull behind it. Because I'm I'm trying to see what's behind there, and it looks like it looks like another office. Yeah, and maybe there's an opening. Maybe there's a window there at the bottom or something. Like, because it looks like if you saying. watch it, if mm. you watch it like frame by frame here, it almost looks like it's pushed out. Yeah, I can't tell that, but um, there is the potential because of those windows in the back. There's sort of an office with glass windows that the locker is up against. So. But yeah, there would have to be a hole through the through the the window or the door. So I I would yeah. say it's the string. Um, but it's it's a clever trick because it it makes you think that it's someone like pulling out the locker and then a second motion rips the notebook out. But really, I think it's just the one motion, um, and it's the pages on top of the notebook. I think that's it. I think yeah. something was attached to the notebook. Yeah. And and it, it it all comes out at once. Right. And then this uh caution wet floor sign 
gets whipped pretty good, but I would say it's probably the same trick with with uh, some kind of uh, clear string, like a fishing line attached to it. Someone yanked it's it. It's pretty cool. It's, it's very pretty cool. cool. It's very well done. I would love this. Whoever made it, let's <laughs> bravo. Talk. Yeah, bravo. It's it's well done. Uh, this is from Cork, Ireland. So pretty cool. Well done. So yeah, if any, if anybody's listening and they know anything about this, and once uh, Halloween's over, let's have them on. Sure. Let's have the principal on. Let's have the print. Even if the principal wants to say, "Listen, no, it's not a hoax." Let's have him on. I want to. I want to. I want to talk to this. This uh, master director. If you're hiring, you know that quality hires keep your business moving forward. But you also know that it can take a lot of time to find the right candidate for your job. Now, with ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. So you can rest easy knowing your job is being seen by the right candidates. Then, ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work, actively notifying qualified candidates about your job within minutes of posting so you receive the best possible matches. That's brilliant. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by growing businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now our listeners can post on ZipRecruiter for free. What do you get in life that's free? Just ZipRecruiter, baby. Pretty much. Pretty much just ZipRecruiter. That's right, free. So go to ZipRecruiter.com slash crawlspace. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash crawlspace. One more time to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash crawlspace. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ghosts uh it's it's that time of the year do you have any ghost stories have you ever been haunted do you believe in ghosts let's uh let's get let's get right deep in here well this does relate a little bit to the thing that i said where i realized something about myself that i didn't you know it was always there but it kind of came up to the surface when i was looking at the um picture from the stanley hotel and I, you know, and you're you're a fan of The Shining. Uh, I'm a fan of The Shining. I, the, the the book and the movie and the concept of this location, and I realized like how truly fascinated I am with an actual explainable circumstance that people could attribute to seeing something spectacular, something paranormal, like ghosts, like like maybe a, a glimpse back in time. Uh, people are obsessed with the concept of the Overlook Hotel, not just as not just as like the place or that place in, in particular, but a place. We're looking at we're looking at a place that you should feel safe, a school, right? And that's what makes you that, that's what makes you that's what makes it so scary. And you look at a hotel and the hotel you go to, you know, why are you at a hotel? Either you're, you're getting away from something. It's your home. You know, it should be your home away from home. And I didn't realize how into that concept I was that a place can generate energy. And I guess that that's, that's where, that's where I came to when I was looking at this picture from the Stanley hotel and whether it's a hoax or not, we've all been in places that, have the, a certain energy and again i would love to go to the stanley hotel i love the I, I love the idea of the overlook hotel that every room has something in it and people can interpret whatever they see in a different way if this energy presents itself to them and it's however you're chemically made up to interpret that and process it you and i went to the queen mary in long beach uh in southern california a few years ago 
uh, which is historic for being haunted and has ghost tours and things like that. And I, I, this was the second time I've done it because uh, I knew you would like it. Um, even though I know you're not like a huge fan of ghosts and necessarily the paranormal, but I know you love mystery. And this is before we started the podcast stuff and everything. Best ghost tour I've ever been on. Um, hands down best ghost tour I've ever been on. And thank you for reminding me about that because I think even back then I wasn't able to articulate what it was about a location. I wasn't able to put it together in my head that there's a location and there's a way you interpret it. And a location has energy and you have energy. And it's a matter of how those energies are going to first um, convey and how you're going to process. Mm -hmm. And after, ap yeah, I guess after, after the Queen Mary, uh, after seeing numerous videos online and trying to debunk them, all of the, you know, the viral things, the viral ghost sightings, um, and just looking at it and, and breaking it down and not doing it. People see these viral things and they start to get, uh, make them uneasy. And mm -hmm. they immediately go to like, it's a ghost. Of course it's a ghost. I had a coworker who showed me this thing and, and he was like, it's a ghost. So, and instantly I was like, no, that's just, it's clearly a person in the background. And someone saw it and thought it looked like a ghost and decided to like play a trick on people. But it's funny, right? Like how you process that. Um, and that's just like watching a video on your phone, being in a place like the Queen Mary, or if you're in a place like uh, some hotel or some place that has some sort of reputation for the paranormal, there's something there. There's, if it's old, if there's something that's happened there, there's an energy there. And there's again, an energy how... there. Yeah, it makes you, it always, and, and I had this experience on the Queen Mary, and I'm sure you did too. Um, but it just like, it feels like people are watching you, you know, and there's no one there though. Uh, and, and the, the and remember the tour guide? Yeah. The guy was amazing. And even his like presentation was so almost nonchalant. Like he, he had a look about him that was awesome, but he just presented these things as like, this is where, you know, the, the door shut on this guy and he died because he was crushed by the door. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next thing cuz he knew that the environment was so was so incredible that he's just going to let you roll that around in your head. Yeah, he didn't have to overdo it. Yeah. <laughs> I interrupted you, so continue. Oh, I don't I don't know what I was going to say, but um, Oh, that you were being watched. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You always felt like you were being watched and I think a I don't lot think of me specifically. I thought I th thought this was everyone. Was it not? Yeah, I, that, I mean, I guess that, that that's the way I'm describing the feeling when you're on a ghost tour or when you're looking for ghosts or when you're, you know, you just, you have your head in that space, right? You, you know, even if you're, uh, you know, and I, I know we don't want to go there necessarily tonight, but even if you're at Maura Murray's accident site, you know, you kind of get the feeling you're being watched. It's just like when you put yourself in a spooky uh, situation, you know, where you've thought about this thing for a long time, you always kind of have that feeling. And that's just the way I described it. No, nah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Because I mean, the first time, the first time we saw the uh, Alden Olsen video, right? I mean, you you were confident he was waiting for you in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah, it's that energy. It's that fear energy that you have. Right. Like I want to see one of those, those guys dressed up like a clown. I want to see this. <laughs> I need to see this guy. One of, please, like I need to see this because I have this, this, uh, this thing. Like when you see the videos and you see the pictures online, you know, I think that's what makes these things so scary. The clown thing is because that's an actual human. That's yeah. a hoax that humans are doing. Right. Um, and there's so, no reason a clown should be walking around a neighborhood at night, uh, other not than to even freak on Halloween, people out. <laughs> right? And so, if your goal is to freak people out, then what else? What else? You why? Why are you there? It makes you a risk if your goal is to, you're only there to freak people out. So it is funny. I agree. I you know, but uh, it's it, kind of dangerous. It is funny. It's I mean, they're arresting these guys because yeah. you you can't. What a weird thing to do. I know we're going off on a bit of a tangent. Yeah, I think we should fun. get... Yeah, we, it is. We should get into this on a whole other episode. But yeah, finish your point. Yeah. yeah. What a weird thing to do. I've done things like that when I was younger to freak somebody out. But what a what a weird concept, right? And it's it's fun. 
But what? How do you arrest? What? What are the charges when you arrest somebody? You get arrested for sk- being scary. Clownery. Clownery. <laughs> Buffoonery. Yeah. Buff- <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they actually passed a law that said you can't clown around anymore. At night. <laughs> At night with the knife. So, uh, Lance, I want to talk about one story that happened to me personally, and I know you, you've heard about this story before, uh, but maybe I can refresh your memory and you can try to shoot any holes in it you want. Um, and I kind of just thought about this story again for the first time today once we decided on doing this uh, topic. Was it about your prom night? <laughs> yes. That's usually the story that you always tell me, and I'm like, Tim, you've told me that <laughs> numerous times. I've already shot holes in the whole thing. <laughs> no, th- this story is about uh, when I was living uh, with uh, an ex-girlfriend uh, in a townhouse in the San Fernando Valley, uh, I want to say around 2008 or nine, And we had just moved into this place, and we had a couple of dogs. And I had an office on the second floor. But the so and so there there was two door two doorbells. One is like was like two floors directly below my office, and the other one was in the front of the townhouse, which was down a floor as well. So uh, so the doorbell would ring, and I remember when we I first started moved in there, and I was actually moving in and like putting furniture together the first day I was in there. Um, the doorbell was doing that, and I went down there and looked around and I had to go to both doors to make sure it wasn't someone actually looking for me. And so I did that and I never saw anyone. I never saw any kids playing ding dong ditch or any heard any kids trying to hide or anything like that. So I thought that was weird. And and it happened like three times, probably the night I moved in and, you know, I didn't really think too much of it, but it got to a point where I, I stopped even answering the doorbell. Uh, because it happened so frequently, and I and I at this point I was writing uh, scripts, so I was kind of writing about um, demons and dark things and and uh, killers and things like that. So I have my first question is: You moved in uh, the day you moved in. You heard these uh, the doorbell, yeah. Um, and then you said uh, you jumped to it. It happened so frequently that it that it was uh, you almost didn't notice it. I, I stopped answering the doorbell. You stopped answering the door. So my question is, um, was there a period of time from the first time you heard it to the um, when you just stopped answering, when you started, like how long was the time frame where you're like, this is weird, uh, and, and, and now like I'm not answering the door anymore, and were you not answering the door because you knew no one, no one would be there, or you weren't answering the door because you were nervous about that? I knew no one would be there. It got to a point where I knew no one would be there. If uh, if I had a friend coming over or something, I typically knew they were coming over. No one just rang my bell, and I wasn't close enough to the neighbors where that would happen. Um, so I remember that first night, I, I told my girlfriend, I think she had come back from the store or something, I don't remember, but, but I remember it happening alone at first. And I told her, and she's like, oh. Uh, you know, and then it happened, and she recognized it. It happened to her, too. Um, and I, I just remember it happening while working. I remember one day specifically, uh, this was a- after the point, it would have been probably a few months after being there. It would have been after the point where I stopped answering it. Just And uh, so doorbell rang and I'm typing, I'm doing work and uh, I just completely ignore it. And then it rings again, a f- like a couple minutes later or a minute later. And I say, oh, maybe it's really a person this time. And I, I uh, remember not getting up um, actually. (laughs) And then I was like, no, it probably still isn't. So two doorbell rings, I remember that I went through and then it rang a third time. And I was like, oh, I guess I have to go see, maybe this really is a person. So I went down the stairs and I sort of yelled from the landing down towards the garage entrance where normally people would go if they knew me were coming over. And so I yelled, is anyone there? And then it rang three times in a row. Bing, 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 bing like that. And then, so I took that as, I guess someone's there. Uh, and so I went down and there was no one there. And then I went to the front and there was no one there. Uh, so, so that was kind of the the start of something very, very weird. Yeah. Go ahead. So were you worked up into a sort of frenzy at this point? 
No, no, not at all at this point. Uh, I wasn't annoyed at it. I mean, I might have been a, a little bit annoyed that it got me up, um, but ignoring it seemed to work. I just didn't answer it, you know. Um, I, I guess I guess my answer could be yes, because sometimes the dogs would probably bark if they heard the doorbell. So it's kind of like a stressful minute or two if dogs are barking and doorbells ringing and all that. So oh, so that no, you're talking about just like a moment's anxiety. Yeah, yeah, that's all I'm talking it, about. It wasn't like you came home, you started doing some work, you got caught up into work, and then you started thinking about the doorbell and no, you know, nothing did like it ever that. like go into your? Were you ever like, 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 <laughs> like, like stir crazy over it? No, no, nothing, nothing, Jack from The Shining like about it at this right. point. Um, but not long after that, we were laying down in bed. Uh, I remember about to fall asleep and we had these vaulted ceilings in the bedroom and they kind of went up maybe like 15 feet and we heard a sound and it sounded like, I'm going to try to my best to do an impression of it, which I've never actually attempted an impression or maybe I have, but it was like, well, is it, is it going to be better than your impression of someone from uh, the Netherlands? <laughs> Nether- <laughs> Shit. I said Netherlands, uh, New, New Zealand, New Don't Zealand. Don't make me try okay. it again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be better, um, but you're not going to have anything to compare it against, but it, it made a sound like this. It was like, uh, like that. And uh, it, it sounded like it came from the corner, like the top corner of the room and the vaulted ceiling, like, you know, somewhere where there really wouldn't be any pipes, you know, because when I told people this, they're like, oh, you know, probably pipe or something like that. And the dogs went nuts. They jumped off the bed. They were going nuts right away. And and uh, my ex heard it, too. Um, and it was weird. You know, it was weird. It was, you know, late at night and it was a uh, spooky sound. How old was the house? Uh, it wasn't that old. It was, um, I want to say, built in uh, probably the 70s. And and I know this because this was the time where I started emailing the landlord and asking about this doorbell and had you guys ever experienced anything weird in this place? And they said, no, no, nothing nothing like that at all. So my first thought when you start telling the story, and I, and I remember when you first told me the story, my first thought was always, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there whose first thought is, Ah, it was a faulty doorbell. Can you can you describe? To, was it one of those ones like the round ones with the little nipple in the middle, uh, or was it the the rectangular ones with the with the rectangular? Yeah, it was know, it was the rectangular one. one. It was the rectangular okay. one. I don't know if it was illuminated, but it was the rect like the beige rectangular one, and it also had like some something dripping. I don't mean to uh, sound sound so weird about this, but it's not melodramatic at all. <laughs> But it it did. It had the, it looked like it was leaking ectoplasm. Okay, I'm gonna say it. That's what it looked like. But in reality, it was probably like glue <laughs> that it had, that it had leaked. You know, whatever whatever was used, whatever cohesive was used to to apply it to the stucco ulterior of that uh, house. I think you meant to say adhesive. What did I say? Cohesive. <laughs> yeah, I definitely meant to say adhesive. <laughs> maybe I'm not so cohesive. <laughs> maybe you maybe you are frazzled and, and worked up about this. Yeah. That's a good one. So uh so then I actually went to our old friend uh Lori Bruno. Um but but actually before before that, the straw that broke the camel's back that made me go to Laurie Bruno, who is, uh, I'll explain in a moment. Um, but I, I started smelling, I smelt maybe twice, uh, this sulfur smell. And if you look it up, sulfurs or demons, you know, if you, if there's a demon, then you smell sulfur. Um, and it's, you know, who the hell knows about this, if it's real or whatnot. But if you look it up, that's what you'll find. And obviously I looked it up cause I was like, well, it smells like rotten eggs in this spot in the apartment, like twice in like maybe like a two week span. And just out of nowhere, like a stink bomb, you know? And it was like, well, that is really weird. Um, and that was it. So uh, so I went back to Boston at one point uh, to visit family. And I, I happened to visit Lori Bruno, who is uh, a psychic, a, well, a very, very well-known um, white witch in Salem, Massachusetts. And, uh, and I used to get readings from her 
maybe every couple of years or something. I thought it was very interesting. And uh, she's kind of almost a family friend of mine, I feel like, at some point, at, at this point. So I remember getting a reading from her, and she was like, She's like, who's doing this ghost hunting? Who's doing this? And I was like, oh, that's that's me. And she was like, cut it out. Knock it off. Yeah. Good. Good. Lori Bruno was like, don't don't tread in my water. <laughs> she, Amateur. She was like, D- yeah, just don't, you know, basically was like, don't, what the fuck are you doing, idiot? Was like kind of her vibe. But it was like, just don't mess with this stuff. You know, just don't, it's not, you don't know anything about it. Don't go hunting for it. Like you're making something out of this that isn't really there. Like maybe there's kind of like you're messing around with something, but whatever it is, you don't understand it. And it's not going to be good if you keep messing with it. It's funny. I can hear her say that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you're in over your head. You don't know it, but you're already in over your head. Yeah. Go get a Ouija board and you know, right. get it out of your system and don't go back to it. Right. And, and my friend Dave, who, uh, who, you know him, he's, uh, sort of, sort of sensitive to these topics. He loves this, um, this arena. And he also claims to have a uh, wolf like, uh, sense of hearing. So he spent a night at, at my place, I think when we were away or something, and he basically just listened <laughs> he, and he doesn't sleep much. So he stayed, he stayed awake most of the night and he just listened to the house and if it made any sounds or anything like that. And he reported that he did not hear anything weird, but then we also tried like the EVP thing. You know, we, we set up cameras and we, uh, we were talking to it, you know, we were talking to a spirit, I guess, if you will, we were talking out in the open. Yeah. Who's we? Me and Dave. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering. Me and who, the spirit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or no, 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 I didn't know if you convinced like several people to come <laughs> over. Because when you said you set up this whole EVP stuff with cameras and then you said we were, yeah. I didn't know. I, I instantly pictured um, like uh, the scene from like Amityville when they invite in uh, the, the, those two ghost hunters. You know, they, it was and they exact, set up everything. It was exactly like that, if, except if it was two stone dudes with a camcorder. Or a digital camera. <laughs> so, so we. Uh, oh wait, <laughs> things are starting to make more sense now. <laughs> well, I will. I will report that we really didn't hear anything. We didn't pick anything up, but we did. We did try, and we put it through the computer, and you know, played it back, and really tried to find anything there, and we found nothing there. I would say. Did your building have a water problem? No, no, not at all. Nothing like that at mm-hmm. all. Um, but right around that time, Dave brought over a, it was like a Greek Orthodox Bible. It was like an old Bible that would have been in his family or something like that. Not like ancient or anything crazy, but it was like his dad's <laughs> Bible or something. And he brought it over and he was like, yeah, just leave this here, see what happens. And that was it. And nothing nothing ever happened again. The doorbell didn't ever ring like that again, I swear to God. We never smelled. After the, after yeah. the Bible was, yeah, was yeah. delivered? No more growling, no more, no more weird smells, nothing resembling uh what i was just describing ever happened again (laughs) i know you're a reasonable person yeah do you think that some things were influenced by other things maybe (laughs) maybe there were smells that were there that you just didn't notice because maybe subconsciously you had the reassurance that this bible was there Oh, oh, interesting. You were going somewhere different with that um, than I thought. Uh, Oh, no, I wasn't talking about the marijuana. (laughs) Yeah. um, You're like, it's starting to smell like skunk in here all the time. (laughs) But there are no skunks outside. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, No, I I don't think so. I mean, you know, my girlfriend lived there, too. Um, She never reported anything like that afterwards. And then we lived there for, I want to say, another year or two or something like that. And there was nothing that really resembled anything like that. Oh, I forgot one other story. Sorry, one other brief part. Me and my uh, ex-girlfriend, we were having a conversation down on the stairs near that door with the leaking doorbell. And uh, and we were just in the middle of a conversation. And she swore that someone like brushed right past her. Like it felt like someone brushed past her. And she said, you know, it was no one, obviously. We were both standing there. But she swore by it. I'm, I'm sure she still would today. Hmm. So that was just another wrinkle. And that probably happened uh, after the growl. Man, see, I'm jealous of stories like this because I don't have stories like this. I have other people telling me stories. I can certainly recount and retell hmm. stories from from uh, from people in my life. Like, uh, 
like my girlfriend has uh, like three stories and you've met her. Yep. She's a very scientific person and she's a very logical person. And I think that's why we get along because what I, she's like what, ego. What I, <laughs> exactly. It's like the, <laughs> it's like the, uh, the Bill Murray to the, um, yeah. Harold Remus. Yeah. Only we're different sexes. <laughs> right. And she she has told me three stories that completely terrify me. And it might be because the way she approaches a story is in a, oh, by the way, this happened to me when I was younger. And, and it starts off where you're thinking, oh, this is kind of creepy. But it's interesting that this person was such a, like, everything comes back to science with that type of mind would, would start telling you this. Yeah. I would agree with and, that, with that based on how, uh, you know, how, how much I know about your girlfriend, which isn't too much. Right. Uh, and by the time the story's over, it's, it becomes as, as terrifying as any story you've ever heard. <laughs> because if this, if this happened to this person and there's, and they say it in such a plain way and they say, well, that I'm just telling you what happened. And so I'm my point is is that I know people who have had these things happen. I unless I've rep- like repressed things, I have no story like that. And it kind of makes me jealous to hear people <laughs> like my girlfriend and like you tell these stories and go through these moments where the doorbell won't stop ringing and you can explain that away and just say, "Well, it was a faulty doorbell. It was it was cross wired, but then, then you follow up with, well, no, my my girlfriend at the time was there, and when you called out to this, this this entity that was ringing the doorbell, it it responded. Yeah, and you don't you didn't make that up. You didn't no. misremember that. I remember when you told me the story. It was literally a couple of weeks after it happened. No, it was close. It wasn't even, it might've been the day after it happened. Yeah. So it's not like you misremember something like that. And it's not like you elaborated on it. Yeah. I also um, posted it to a website and I'll, I'll search uh, for that website. Um, and, and if it's there still, I will link to it in the show notes, but uh, there were some comments. I think the blogger kind of wrote a little uh, piece on it. Update. I have found the article. It's in a website called, ghosttheory.com and if you search ghostly growl you'll find it Uh, it's from 2009 or uh, i will also link to it in the show notes and maybe there's some details there that i forgot but i i hear what you're saying it's it's more frightening when it's someone that you wouldn't believe would believe in in this you know or uh because i don't even know what i believe like i'm not gonna sit here and say up that i believe in ghosts now because of that and i because i don't i i can't say that that's what happened because of that. Um, I, I don't know what the, <laughs> what the hell to think. I was also writing like really spooky shit around that time. And I was Googling really dark stuff to, you know, for research on these scripts that I was writing. So I was definitely opening a door and looking into a world that uh, I hadn't really looked into in, in that kind of depth at that point. So th- there could be something there too. Comes back around to this whole energy thing that I didn't realize I was so into until we started talking about this. There's a certain thing out there that possesses energy. There's a certain electromagnetism out there that people consume. And you consume it based on what your chemical makeup is. So who knows? But it gets it, it starts lending credibility when more of the the when more similar stories come out the the sulfur smell you know how does that how does that keep coming up i mean i i know some houses have the sulfur smell because they have water problems and it's like forced hot air or forced hot water but if you look into um sleep apnea people have the same story about that and that's that's like worldwide it's almost inexplicable yeah that's so terrifying. there's this yeah this weird this human energy that is released and consumed in different ways based on how your chemical makeup is. But then physical places, graveyards, Native American burial grounds. How, you know, how, how old is, is that story? You know, a, a house or a, something, a hotel built on a Native American burial ground. Yeah. I mean, you're instantly haunted. 
Right. Once you find out about that, it's instantly haunted because your brain is interpreting things that 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 may or may not have happened there. Right. And it generates this energy. Okay, so to be clear, we're we're both kind of saying that we think that ghosts are real in a sense, but not in like the way that Slimer is going to fly down the hallway and, and leave ectoplasm on your shirt. It's more in like the collective energy that people can create from emotion. I think we've hit a real milestone right now because that that's, yeah, less like Slimer. Although that would be absolutely hilarious if you saw Slimer. That would be <laughs> one of the funniest things to ever see. Yeah. And more in the sense of there's this there's this thread or this web of invisible energy that keeps knitting itself together between all of this like magnetism and 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 perception and how you consume that. Yeah, I'm much, I'm much more likely to believe uh, B than A. Um, but I'm curious to hear from you out there. Uh, so send us your stories. Send us an email, crawlspacepodcast at gmail.com. Send us a message on Twitter, too, at crawlspacepod. Curious to hear your stories or your takes on these stories. Um, and Lance, does your girlfriend believe in ghosts then because of these stories? Or because of these experiences? I think she uh, I think she'll listen to this episode and maybe we'll have a conversation and I I'm I'm willing to bet that we'll come back to not so much the Slimer ghost thing but more like a collective energy manifesting what's in your mind yeah. and how you how you perceive things. Um and that's the fun of this particular vault uh series that we do. We just like let's come up with two topics, let's come up with three topics, whatever, and let's let's go with it. Yeah. So I like what you were saying. If anybody out there is listening and they have, if you have pictures or stories or something, send them in. Next episode or next, you know, couple episodes, we'll read it. Well, you know, even if yeah, it, we even can if do it's a, hilarious, we can do a, a Halloween spooky episode if we get enough good ones. There you go. And we don't need a lot because if you're still listening, you realize that we can talk for many, many minutes <laughs> about many, 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 many minutes about seemingly unimportant stuff. But it feels good because we spend a lot of time with uh, very serious stuff. Right. Or nothing if you actually think about it because we're talking about nothing physical. So it's kind of we a, actually. Yeah. What a great point. We're actually talking about nothing physical. I need to stop hitting the table, first of all. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if anybody else is out there that has uh, a chord struck within them when I was talking about being obsessed with the concept of a place like the Stanley Hotel, how that became the Overlook Hotel, I haven't fully formulated what my real obsession with this is other than the the whole energy thing is if there are people out there who who dig deep into locations into 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 why something is a ghost town or abandoned or or haunted like like send those in too because that that's super fascinating i love that yes please send yeah. those in at crawlspacepodcast at gmail.com and I just want to make sure that we thank people for listening to um, what is a, a, the lighter version of what we do, these vault interludes. Um, we have a good time doing it. We hope that people who are listening enjoy the, uh, the lighter stuff. Thank you.